for the Quan, I use very lightweight most of the time. Usually I'm fishing this in fairly weedy situations. So I use a bead chain, um, but that's not to say that's the only weight that you have that you can use. Um, I know a lot of guys do fish them deeper, and they'll fish fish them with lead eyes. And I use gold bead chain, medium size. I'm going to tie those in just like I tied in my lead eyes on the clouser. These are a little easier to tie in because that middle piece where you're putting your figure eights around is much smaller, so it stays put a lot better than the lead eyes do. And then I just take the thread back to the rear. Uh, and this is polar fiber. I kind of want to pass this around and have everybody feel it. Uh, the recipe for quans and bonefish flies, everything out there is usually craft fur. Um, I really dislike craft fur. It is very stiff and abrasive. Uh, I've been using this polar fiber for the past few years. When you feel it, it's a real soft, wispy material. Uh, a lot of times when your fly hits the water and sinks to the bottom, if you just let it sit there, that polar fiber is just sitting there with the waves and in the, with the tide and just moving. Uh, it also has more of a translucence to it than craft fur does. In my opinion, there's no reason to be using craft fur anymore. Polar fiber is way better stuff. And you can get it in all kinds of colors as well. Uh, the main colors I use are white, uh, shrimp, and then this color, which is camel. Those are my three favorites. But I do use olive and black and other colors too. But you call it polar fiber, but it actually did not come off of a polar fiber. No, it's a synthetic. So it's a lot like craft fur. It comes on a, I don't know what you call that, a skein or a, a patch. Uh, it's just, I don't know, the extrusion process is just different. It's a lot finer, a lot wispier. You can see, you can even just stroke it back with your hands. Yeah. Or your craft fur just kind of sticks out. So uh, what I'm going to do, I stroke out a piece that's probably oh, half the size of a pencil when you pull it down. And I try to cut it all the way down by the base. I want to get as much length out of this as I can. And one of the reasons for that is I'm going to get a lot of the, the bottom pieces out. I'll just take pinch it off about a half an inch down. And you can see I get all kinds of short stuff out of there. You want to get rid of all, all that because all that does is just bulk up your tie-in point. doesn't really do you any good. And what you can do is you can see how it's fairly fat uh, right there and then really short back here. I want to shorten that up a little bit and you can do that just by grabbing it with your fingernail and just rip off that wispy stuff so you get a nice even taper just like, I mean think of like what a shrimp looks like. Nice even taper like that. And as far as an exact way to measure out how long you want the tail, I don't really have a way. I mean, four lengths, I have no idea. I just kind of eyeball it and, you know, say, oh, that, that looks about right to me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had an exact measurement, but I guess that would be, I don't know, two and a half lengths of the hook or something like that. And I'm just going to tie that in at the rear. Put a couple tie-down points down there. And now here... What I want to try to do is I want to trim this somewhat of an angle so as I wrap forward I get the body somewhat the same thickness. If I clip it right to the butt I'm going to have a big ball at the rear. So what I'll do is I'll just cut it at a bit of an angle just like that. And I'll just slowly wrap up over all that material. You can see that body stayed a fairly uniform thickness. After I've done that, I'm going to take what they call Lydia's yarn. Uh, there's a lot of substitutes you can use for this. I've heard of some guys plucking out carpet fibers. I'm pretty sure it's the same stuff as carpet. It's just a nylon uh, yarn. And I use tan and brown. Those are the two colors I use pretty much exclusively for this fly. And I'll do two pieces of tan. So I'll trim off two pieces about an oh, inch and a half in length. And then I'll trim off one strand to brown. And I'm going to tie in the tan first and last and put the brown in between. So how I do this is I take my uh, yarn and I kind of hold it off to an angle, kind of pointing off towards my right. And I'll make a fairly loose wrap just to kind of grab it. Then I'll go under it and behind it and then I'll pull that far piece to kind of make a, an X. I don't know if you can see that, but I just kind of X'd it in. And you want it to be parallel to the floor. Think of like what a crab looks like. You kind of want that long piece parallel. Then I'll do 
so those first two wraps were loose, just kind of get it in place. The next two I do are tight, and at the end I'll kind of pinch everything and tighten down on it, then make two wraps on the body to keep it nice and tight. So it should look just like an airplane, just like that with wings hanging off the side. Now once you've done that, uh, you're going to take your brown piece and you're going to do the same exact thing. Kind of angle it off, loose wrap, another new loose wrap. Now you can see here I have a bit of a space. I don't know if you can really tell, but I have a little bit of a space in between the two and that just bugs me. I, don't, I like them as close together as possible. So once I do those first two wraps, I can actually take the material, loosen up on my bobbin and see how I just scooted it back mm -hmm. just a hair. I mean, that's all it takes. I'll lay a wrap down there. I'll tighten everything up. Just like that. That way, I mean, everything is like right up against each other. And then I'll do the same thing. kind of hard to work around the eyes once you get towards the front. You'll get used to doing them with more of them you tie. Okay. And sometimes I'll just try to cover up everything. You'll have some stray fibers up by the eye usually. Okay. So we've pretty much applied all the material to the hook. So now you just have to whip finish and the rest is going to be trimming and coloring. So to trim your quan, you can always trim it long and cut some more. If you trim real short, there's no putting it back on. So usually I tend to be on the more cautious side and trim a fairly large uh, body rather than a small body. And the way I do this is I kind of want to round uh, these edges so it looks somewhat like a crab. So I'll trim it fairly long. <clears throat> you can see just like that, see how I kind of rounded the, the ends a little bit. And I'll do the same thing. And this isn't as easy as you think it is to get these two sides even. So now that's a little long. So what I'll go do is just get in there and just kind of eyeball it and trim it a little more. And that's pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is color up our polar fiber. What I like to do is I like orange. A lot of my saltwater flies have orange in them or some type of bright color. And I think it really looks like the shrimp has been hit or bruised or something like that and it's bleeding its goo out of its rear or something like that. Because a lot of the insides of these crabs and shrimps are yellow or uh, orange. So I'll just take my marker and color up a good section of the rear. Just like that. And then I'll take my brown marker and what I'm going to try to do is just put stripes down the... And I do this a lot with a lot of my redfish and bonefish flies. like that. And that's a quan. Another pretty easy one to tie. So shrimp? I think it's it was tied to be a shrimp, but I don't know. 